So let's look at the second example on the principle of moments. Okay, so we're given this question here or this diagram here, and we are asked to find the distance from the 20 Newton force that's this part here to the pivot, which is this part here. All right, so find the distance between them, and the distance here has been labeled x. That's this. So in this question, you're asked to find the value of x. So what do you do here? Now, in our part one or in our previous class, we discussed the concept of moments and we said for us to find moments, our first task would be to choose a particular point, which is usually your pivot point, which in this case would be choose this point here. Let's give it a label. Let's call it in this case, let's call it A. Let's call this point A. So we have to take moments, right? Taking moments about point A. So we'll say taking moments, taking moments about point a or a right and we do that from the principle of moments that is sum of moments okay the sum of moments so sigma m that's moment at point a so sigma m a this simply means the sum of moments at point a it's equal to zero okay now when you do this your next task would be getting the concept of clockwise and anti-clockwise moments and we're saying this is called the clockwise moment we're taking clockwise moments as positive all right so if you missed our previous class on the principle of moments that explains all of these concepts from scratch i'll leave a link to that video in the video description or pinned comments all right so check the video description or pinned comments and you see a link to the first class that explains all of this from scratch all right, let's solve this now. So how do we do this? What's the next task here? Our next task here will now be to identify which of the forces are clockwise or which of the forces will give us a clockwise moment and which of the forces will give us an anti-clockwise moment. Let's start with the 5 Newton. Let's start with this one here. Um, okay, before, before doing that, let's recall something. Let's recall that if a force goes in this direction like this, it's called clockwise and it's positive. All right, so this is clockwise. Let me call this CL clockwise or perhaps CW clockwise. If a force is going in this other direction like this, it is going against the hands of a clock and it becomes negative. It's called the anti clockwise, all right, or ACW, whichever one. So we have this. All right. So now back to this. The 5 Newton, let's look at 5 Newton. If we trace 5 Newton, the, the concept is simple. Trace the force. It, if it's going downwards, trace the force downwards and then trace it towards your point. For 5 Newton, this 5 Newton is going downwards. So I'll trace 5 Newton downward up to this point. So I'm having this kind of motion. Right? So trace it towards A. I'm having this. So you're having this kind of motion. Uh, let me trace it from 5. So 5 Newton is coming downward towards A like this. All right. So that means you're having this kind of motion, which is like this. What I have here is going against the hands of a clock or a wall clock. So this 5 Newton here is an anti-clockwise motion. I'll call it um, A. What about 10 Newton? 10 Newton is coming down like this and it's going towards A like this. So if I look at the direction of this motion, it's going this way. You can say it's going this way. Yeah, it's going this way. This is also an anti-clockwise motion. I'll call it A, anti-clockwise motion. If you look at the 20 Newton here, 20 Newton is going downwards towards A. So I'm going from here. I'm going downwards towards A. If I look at this, if I draw this in full, this is going down like this and then this way. And this direction here is positive. Why? It's a clockwise motion. All right, that's the way the hands of a clock moves. When you have 12, um, okay, let me do this somewhere else. When you have, um, when you have, a wall clock here 12 3 6 9 right the hands of a clock moves like this right this same direction which is the same thing as what you're seeing here like this all right so it's called a clockwise moment okay so i said i'll leave a link to a previous class on principle of moments in the video description so you can get the full concept of this so this is clockwise all right so we have this all right so we now have this case here what do we do next? We said the sum of moment about point A is equal to zero. And this means that what we have here means that if it's a clockwise moment, take it as positive. Now, if that's true, let's start with 5 Newton. 5 Newton, we said is anti-clockwise moment, so it becomes negative. So I have minus 5 times the distance from 5 to your pivot A. 
from 5 newton to a here the distance is given up here that's from this part here to this which is actually 3 meters from here to a is given up here as 3 meters all right so we have 3 meters there so it becomes minus 5 times 3 that's the first one there it's negative because it's anti-clockwise what about 10 10 is also anti-clockwise so it becomes minus 10 into distance from 10 newton up to the pivot that means from this point here to this this distance here is also given as 2 meters so it becomes minus 10 times 2 so this times 2 i'm done with the anti-clockwise moments let me take clockwise moments for clockwise moments we have 20 distance from 20 to the pivot that's from this point here up to 20 here it's unknown it's x and that's what we ask to find so it becomes positive 20 positive because it's clockwise so plus 20 into my distance is what there x and we said sum of moment is equal to zero so i'm done with all the forces i'll equate it to zero all right so what do we have here minus 5 times 3 gives you minus 15 minus 10 times 2 gives you minus 20 plus 20 times x gives you 20x it's equal to zero minus 15 minus 20 gives you minus 35 so minus 35 plus 20x it's equal to zero to get the value of x i'll have to move minus 35 over here that becomes positive so you have 20x it's equal to minus 35 becomes positive 35 all right to get the value of x here i'll have to divide here by 20 divide here by 20 this cancels this so we have that x is equal to now punch 35 divided by 20 what do we get all right so if you do this you have your answer as 1.75 of course the distance is in meters so you have 1.75 meters as your answer all right so this is how you solve this question okay all right so as usual don't forget that you can always visit my website to get my courses in details and also um, the available books simply visit www.junaimmanuel.com all right and then register an account go to my account Register an account to the website and there you can look at the books slash courses section to get any of the available books or courses that you'd want to. All right. So go ahead to www.jonahimano.com and then go to my account, register an account with the website, then go over to the books slash or the courses section and you can get any of the available books or courses that you might need. All right. All right. Then as usual, thank you for your many support. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button, all right, and leave a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. If it's your first time or if you're yet to subscribe, please do well to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload a new content. And don't forget to share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class.